Hello everybody and welcome to Lorry Goes Loco. Today we have been asked up to the Amonton Railway to perform a very special task. This is a little Ruston Hornsby 44-48, very much like the one I drove ooh, several months ago and very similar in almost every detail to my own one, apart from the fact it's a lot smaller and longer in some regards. Yeah. The proportions have changed quite dramatically. This is number 221623. I got that right, that's good, that's good. I couldn't remember the number. And today is going to be the first time it's pulled a train in 21 years. And that honor falls down to me. Because as part of the 10K plus celebration, wherever it's actually moved on to now, what's happened is I've been invited to come and have a play, which is actually rather quite exciting. And also, I like Rustons, and I like being asked to do stuff like this, so this is quite exciting. And I'll be honest, it's a little bit terrifying because 21 years of work could just go. So before all that, let's actually have a look and work out what this thing is. Well, it's a Ruston and Hornsby, so that's a good start, isn't it? Now this one, like my own, weighs about seven tonnes, which again has some TARDIS stuff going on because my one's a lot bigger and this one is significantly smaller. But it does have these absolutely massive weights bolted on the side of it. There and there and at the back end. It's, there's a lot of weight in that. That's a silly amount of weight. It's also a bit different to the other one I drove recently because the cab finishes here. So we have space over here for the fuel tank, which is not where my one is because my one's at the front and it's not where the other one I drove is because that's also at the front. So the cab's a lot smaller. And then when we get in here, it's got some other differences. But first, we'll go on to the history. This thing behind me was delivered brand new on the 11th of June, 1943 to INAD Broughton Moor. And the big thing to notice about this was it wasn't a two foot gauge network. This wasn't built as a two foot gauge locomotive. No sir, it ran on the two foot six inches, which meant it ran on wider tracks. So that's different to what it is now. And it spent about 50 years shunting things around, but quite notably explosives and ammunition. So that meant that it had to be flame-proofed. It couldn't create any sparks. You couldn't open the throttle and send little bits of diesel particles and sparky things into the sky because that would be bad because I don't know if you know this, but if you combine fire and hot things with explosive things, they tend to go boom. And generally that's frowned upon in these kind of circles. So that's cool. And so it's a, a bit different and special for that kind of reason. And basically that's all it did for its entire life. It, it just shunted back and forth. There were a couple of other engines there and that was it. So it was during this time that it picked up its name, which is Yard Number 70, because funny enough, it was Number 70, which is fairly self-explanatory. In 1992, the present owners went and bidded and managed to purchase it. And they decided to bring it straight here to Amazon. And there was a bit of a story behind this. Because when it turned up on the back of a lorry, there was meant to be a crane to pick up the seven ton lump and drop it off, like I did with my one, which makes things a lot easier only the crane didn't turn up. So thinking fast, they got a load of wood and managed to jack the locomotive up off the trailer, drive the lorry out and wave goodbye to them, and then very slowly lower it down to its new home, which must have been sketchy at the very best. And the locomotive ran here. It had some problems with the gearbox, but that was sorted and it carried on and trundled up and down until 99 where it was stopped, and this monumental overhaul began. And nothing happened. They slowly put it back together, and it didn't run until two days ago, when it went out for its first little trundle. And soon we're going to go put it onto a train. The lump that powers this is Ruston's own unit, the 4VRO. And what threw me when I first opened up the flaps and had a look because these are the same kind of flaps that mine should have, these foldy outy things like this. Mine should have these, but they were taken off. Long story, doesn't matter. The first thing that threw me when I opened this was it's the wrong way around to my one. My one, I've got the hand start, which is just in there over here, 
and the flywheel is at this end. It's all 180 degrees. It's, it's a little bit strange. But the thing that is particularly interesting is if we come around here, come with me, Ben, there are things to see. It's this. Now this is the air intake here. And because it doesn't need to be flame proof anymore, they put washers in the spaces here to allow air in. But in its original days, these tiny, tiny slots you can just see here and there, that was how it breathed. How? And this is all part of the flame proofing of it, but that's bonkers. Like, just, 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 how did this engine run? And then we have this big sensor on here and the exhaust pipe that goes round to the back. Now, originally, the reason that we have this space at the back was because it had a exhaust system that was designed to stop any flames coming out. They were quite paranoid about this thing making things go boom. Apart from that, it's actually pretty tidy. It's, it's a lot less oily than the other ones I've looked at and a lot less kind of grubby. Yeah, that's beside the way. It's really quite smart. I mean, these, these things are really attractive little engines. They are stereotypical industrial shunting engines and I think every Thomas the Tank Engine fan recognises them to be rusty because basically, yeah, it's the same shape and yeah, that's basically what it is. This one is, the, the radiator is a bit different on the front as well. It's lacking the rustin across the front, but small cosmetic changes and nothing that massive. It's also got a light at the front and a light at the back, which, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's quite an impressive piece of kit really, isn't it? I love the fact that they're basically the same thing, but they're so very different. Right. And with all of the Rustin 48s, the drive is from this chain here, which goes down to the axle, and there's one for each axle. This cab is significantly smaller than the other 44 slash 40 I drove, and obviously significantly smaller than my one because the whole thing's a lot smaller. Now, getting in it is, oh, okay. This is fine for one person. No problems with that. There's a handy little toolbox down here, which is full of spare bits. Everything, it's quite easy to get to. The gearbox is here with first, second, and third. And this is how you control the engine. This, all the control is off this, so that feels, that feels nice. The handbrake is here. Forward and backwards on the reverser is here. There's a button up here for the klaxon, which is awesome. Then there are the electrical gumming holder things there, which don't do anything anymore. Somewhere there should be a switch, I think, because this goes to the light here. Somewhere there should be a switch, but I don't know where they are. And then the throttle is this one down here. Now, that's the only thing that I don't particularly like with it, because you kind of want to drive it in this position, looking either that way or that way. And the throttle is somewhere hidden behind you. Now, obviously, with these things, you're meant to put it, set a throttle and then control for the gears, but it's just it's a bit awkward to get to. And then here we have the decompressors for, for starting. Because that's the next thing we're going to have to do, is fire it up. The thing about these things is they're really easy to prep. Because, well, little industrial engines, they didn't get a whole lot of love. So all we have to do is reach down into here, pull out the dipstick, which is there. And yeah, we can tell there is there's oil on that, so that's a good start. No gearbox oil stick on this one. This is a, no. Normally you've got a, a dipstick for the gearbox oil. Don't know where it is on that, don't think it has one. Then this being the 4VRO engine, we have these little slide things on top of the, uh, the rocker. And we've just got to squirt a little bit of oil into that one. Shut that up. And a bit of oil into this one. because my one oils automatically. It's got this all on a high pressure system and this one does not. So that's kind of important. Now, apparently if you put too much oil in, all it does is it overflows off the top of the head and dribbles down the side of the engine. So we're going to be a little sparse because I know the owner has put some in beforehand. This is weird because my one, the drive now would drive the radiator here. So the radiator here is driven off the flywheel down there. I assume there's a drive belt. Yeah, that's just, that's very strange. The other strange thing is that the sander pipe can be seen dangling down there. 
that's never been regauged, so that's where it should sit if the locomotive was still on two foot six inch gauge. So at the moment, the sander, if you tried to use it, would be totally useless. It would just sand the ballast and provide you with nothing. There is one thing I thought on the cab, which is hidden down in there, which you'll never be able to see on the camera. I'll have to get a shot of that. There is a little audio point for the transfer box, which is uh, impossible to get at, like simply impossible. I don't think it'll ever be oiled by anybody ever, apart from the owner who will then come at me with a hammer or something for not oiling it out. That is very awkward. The starter motor is here, but the starter motor presently isn't connected to anything, which means we've got to start this the old fashioned way. And I know you guys love watching me struggle with hand start vehicles. So that basically are all the checks done. Let's just check the oil there, shut that up. The axle boxes have feeds here, but I am assured it is full, so we don't need to do anything with that. So the next stage is to try with the handle. Right, so somewhere in here, there'll be a starting handle. And the way we start this, is we set the throttle to lots, pull the decompressor out, open this side up. Ah, starting handle. And we hope. Now, what you don't know, guys, is there is a big group of people now over there, all watching me, ready to laugh when this goes wrong. honoured for this privilege to be one of the first people to drive this engine since it's finished its rebuild. So without any further ado, <laughs> and break off to gear. I see the owner looking quite scared. Oh. I do feel some Slight bit of fear, some trepidation by the the fact that I am the first person, one of the first people to pull this on a train. And their fear of if it breaks is I feel quite bad. 21 years. Now, the next thing to do, obviously, is uh, see what it's like 
as we change through the gears. So we'll give it some revs. Second gear. That sounds like it's slipping. That's that's unpleasant. Let's try third. Straight in on third. The gearbox on this one feels a lot better than my own. It's a lot tighter. And everything, there's a bit more resistance putting it into gear. That, it feels a very forceful putting it into gear. And I know the owners had the gearbox to bin, so. Seems to pull well. It's a lot, lot quieter than the other 48 that I've driven on the arrow gauge and, and mine for exhaust noise. The only noise you can really hear in here, apart from the transmission whirring away, is you can hear the click of the injection pump. I can't hear any exhaust noise at all because it's got this nice pipe work inside them, so it's not like the one at the Great Bush Railway that you know you've opened the throttle. Marvellous, absolutely marvellous. I don't enjoy this so much because it reminds me of my own Ruston and it's just nice to have a comparison between the two of them, this one and, well, the big one and the other one I've driven. The biggest thing about being sat in here is the obvious lack of a floor. There's a big gap there where I can just see through to the, the rails and a gap there where I can see the wheels. Seeing the wheels is quite useful. It means if I'm slipping, I can see and I can try and regain traction like that. But it is, it is a, a little bit alarming looking down going, ah, no floor! But I'm definitely sure I'm feeling more vibration through my bottom in this one than the other one that I drove. But the engine, it is silky smooth. I mean, give it a bit more power here. Right? Ruston I drove, fantastic out the back, great out the front, you can see plenty out there. I've got a little sliding window here, which I really like, so I get a bit more airflow through, and I can see everything out the front. The ride quality, well, let's be frank, it's, it's not brilliant. Everything squeals around it, it's very loud, but track is actually pretty good, it's it's not too rough, but every kind of vibration of the gearbox, I can feel it through my bottom and my whole legs. Now, I know in order to get this ready for this weekend's gala at Hamilton, these guys have been working through the night to get it ready. And what a credit to them to actually have it done and fixed and working, because this thing is brilliant. It's, they've done a great job. I love this. I love the gearbox on these Rustons. They're great. I love the, just how easy they are to drive. To set the throttle and pull and away it goes. Why is it that all Rustons are just loud and noisy and bang about? This is so loud. But less loud than the other one. Comparatively much quieter. So there's a red signal ahead, so we'll drop it out of gear and apply the brake. That's not doing much. Yep, that's uh, really not doing much. Let's uh, 
put it into the first gear to slow us down. That's all of the brake. Yeah, yeah, the... There we are. The brake is quite shocking. Like, it's pretty bad. That was all of the brake. So, uh, that needs adjusting. That's, that's definitely not good. Apart from that, it's great. Considering this is basically the first time it's been out with a train, no problems at all. This is a successful test run. I've loved it. It's just, it's great. I can't imagine what it would have been like to actually have been on these every day and worked on them all the time. But being it now, it's just, it's lovely. And just what a sense of pride to be in it. I'd be like, I'm the first person to drive this, or I'm one of the first people to drive this. We got the signal. So, that means it's time to go and use my favourite button in the world. <laughs> That's brilliant. Give us a breath. delightful you've got such a massive amount of feel how much those clutches are engaging uh, you could you could buffer up to a to a fiambe or to a what's the thing that goes down is it fiambe fiambe when you clap it it goes down one of those you could buffer up to a balloon and not pop it you could buffer up to a mouse you would give a mouse a fist bump with this that's how much control you've got it is phenomenal This is a delightful little machine. It is absolutely delightful. there you have it guys i have successfully recommissioned a russian 44 48 and what an amazing honor it has been to come up and drive it on one of its very first trains after a 21 year overhaul i was like that big when this last ran so that's that's amazing i don't know about you but i have thoroughly enjoyed it it's been great and i love rustons as you might be able to tell from the fact that i own one and this thing is no exception. It is just wonderful. In fact, I'm a little bit jealous because it sounds absolutely amazing. It, it sounds brand new. In fact, it pretty much is. It really does feel like a new locomotive. There's, there's no real slack in it. There's nothing. It's just new. You can imagine this kind of being shipped off now somewhere to go and work in a factory or a mine or something. It's, it's brilliant. And of course, so a massive thank you to both the Amazon Railway for inviting us up and to the owners for trusting us with this massive honour. Thank you very much, guys. And if you like what you've seen in this video, you like the look of the Amazon Railway, there's a link in the video description. Get involved. They'd love to hear from you. They would love to have some more volunteers. Or just come along and visit, because frankly, it's a superb little railway. And on that note, thank you very much, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe share this video with your friends help us keep growing at this absolutely unprecedented phenomenal rate and if you've enjoyed this video please click up here for the last ruston 48 i looked at or about down here for my own personal ruston 48 see you there guys <laughs>